we have here the case of Abelia versus Abosta Ship Management Corp, which emphasized the obligation of the employer to furnish the seafarer with the company-designated physician's report. Gregorio was engaged under a 10-month employment contract by Pan Star Shipping Company Limited or Pan Star through its agent, Abosta Ship Management Corporation or Abosta, to work as an oiler on board the MV Sino Trader. He was deployed on March 20, 2016. On June 23, 2016, Gregorio and several crewmates were ordered to carry ship supplies and food provisions. While carrying a sack of rice, Gregorio claimed to have felt a sudden snap on his left lower back with a sharp pain radiating down to his thigh or leg. He immediately reported the incident to his superiors and he was given pain relievers and a waist protector. Since his condition did not improve, he was brought to a medical center in Singapore where he was diagnosed with lumbar spondylosis with discopathy at L4 to L5, L5 to S1, and was also prescribed medication. He was again brought to a hospital in Brazil because of persistent pain. On August 6, 2016, he was repatriated to the Philippines for further medical treatment. Upon arrival, Gregorio immediately reported to the company-designated physician on August 8, 2016. After running a series of laboratory tests on Gregorio, the company-designated physician diagnosed him with herniated nucleus pulposus L3 to L4, disc protrusion L5 to S1, and L4 radiculopathy and recommended that he undergo physical therapy. Gregorio claimed, however, that the employer ceased his treatment and rehabilitation on February 16, 2017. During a conference held on February 20, 2017, the employer informed Gregorio that he suffered from grade 8 disability and offered him the corresponding disability benefits in the amount of 16,795 US dollars. Gregorio requested for further treatment or an improved monetary offer, but his requests were denied. On April 25, 2017, Gregorio consulted his personal doctor, an orthopedic surgeon who diagnosed him with disc protrusion L5 to S1 and radiculopathy and declared him permanently unfit for sea duty in any capacity. Gregorio instituted a complaint for payment of total and permanent disability benefits against the employer. According to Gregorio, the company-designated physician failed to timely issue a final medical assessment. He emphasized that the employer was not able to present any final medical assessment even during the mandatory conferences before the Office of the Labor Arbiter. The employer contended that based on an alleged November 22, 2016 medical assessment issued by the company-designated physician, Gregorio only suffered from a grade 8 disability. The employer posited that said November 22, 2016 medical assessment should prevail. Said employer also stressed that Gregorio failed to provide a copy of the medical assessment of his personal doctor of choice prior to his filing of the complaint. In the meantime, the parties agreed to refer the conflicting medical findings to a third doctor. The appointed third doctor recommended Gregorio to undergo a magnetic resonance imaging or MRI scan and electromyography or EMG test. Despite the release of the MRI scan and EMG test results, the medical assessment of the third doctor was not secured. Gregorio claimed that the non-completion of the conflict resolution procedure was due to the fault of the employer, which the latter denied. Is Gregorio entitled to total and permanent disability benefits? The Supreme Court ruled in the affirmative. The court stated that claims for disability benefits for injuries suffered by seafarers on board or during the term of their employment contract are governed by the provisions of Section 20A of the POEA Standard Deployment Contract in that the seafarer has the obligation to report to the company-designated physician within three days from his repatriation, while the company-designated physician has the corresponding obligation to issue a final assessment of the seafarer's disability within the periods mandated by law. The court clarified that it is, however, not enough for the company designated physician to issue a medical assessment within 120 or 240 days from the seafarer's repatriation. In order to be binding, the medical assessment must be final, definite, and conclusive. Otherwise, the law will step in and consider the seafarer totally and permanently disabled. Jurisprudence has described a final, conclusive, and definite medical assessment as that which must clearly state whether the seafarer is fit to work or the exact disability rating or whether such illness is work-related and without any further condition or treatment. It should no longer require any further action on the part of the company-designated physician and it is issued by the company-designated physician after he or she has exhausted all possible treatment options within the periods allowed by law. Jurisprudence also teaches that apart from issuing a final, conclusive, and definite medical assessment, the company-designated physician and or the company must also furnish the seafarer a copy thereof 
to require the seafarer to seek the decision of a neutral third-party physician without primarily being informed of the assessment of the company-designated physician is a clear violation of the tenets of due process and is not countenanced. In the present case, the court found that the company-designated physician failed to furnish Gregorio with a copy of the November 22, 2016 medical assessment within the periods mandated by law. The court also found that Gregorio was informed of his grade 8 disability rating only during the conference held on February 20, 2017 before the Office of the Labor Arbitration. The court stressed that a verbal notice of the seafarer's disability rating is not enough. The reason for furnishing the seafarer with a copy of the final medical assessment is to afford the seafarer the opportunity to evaluate the same and decide whether he agrees with it or not. Should the seafarer disagree with it, he ought to bring the same to an independent doctor who can only get a better understanding of the opinion of the company-designated physician through a copy of the latter's medical assessment. In the present case, the court stated that Gregorio cannot be expected to make an informed decision on the medical assessment of the company-designated physician based on a mere verbal declaration of his purported disability. Said the court, insofar as he is concerned, no final medical assessment was issued by the company-designated physician to contest. As such, Gregorio need not seek the opinion of an independent physician, more so refer the matter to a third doctor. Without the proper notice of the November 22, 2016 medical assessment to Gregorio, he was already deemed totally and permanently disabled by operation of law and therefore entitled to the corresponding disability benefits under the POEA standard employment contract. The medical assessment of Gregorio's personal doctor as well as the absence of a medical assessment from a third doctor became immaterial. The court added that the November 22, 2016 medical assessment as an attachment to the employer's position paper was furnished Gregorio on September 8, 2017 or 396 days from his repatriation. For the court, the final medical assessment of the company-designated physician was clearly not furnished to Gregorio within the 120 or 240-day periods mandated by law. The court ordered the employer to pay total and permanent disability benefits to Gregorio.